Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. In today's video, we're gonna do an overview on our Track DPM RX bed mills. I'm standing in front of the DPM RX3, which is our most popular of our bed mill types. Um, the RX is of course our newest control. I'm sure you've probably seen some videos that explain uh, the new control, but I'll go over some of the features of that in a moment. Right now, I wanna explain that this is one of four models of our DPMs. And so uh, this one here has 31 and a half by 17 by 25.8 travels in the X, Y, and Z. There is a smaller version, which is more comparable to a knee mill. So it has dovetail weighs, three horsepower, um, almost the same travels, slightly less. And then there's two models that go larger, basically 20 by 40 and 60 by 23 inch travels in our RX-5 and our RX-7. So um, as far as which model you would pick, I think you just look at all the specs and figure out which one fits your sizes best, but they all work exactly the same way. On this one, it's a five horsepower model. It's got a 40 taper spindle. Uh, it's got box ways. I gave you the travels already, but uh, there's a couple other really important things to, to point out. First of all, this thing has a low and a high gear, just like a standard knee mill has. So you got that torque for doing those bigger tooling jobs or the harder tools and stuff like that. Um, and then most importantly, all of our DPMs have a quill uh, glass scale, which means that you can read wherever I move the Z with the quill. And that's tied into the Z encoder that moves ahead up and down. So whenever I move either one, they both register in the same Z position that you're in the DRO mode. So for instance, if I'm here in DRO, you notice that my Z axis is right here. If I move over a little bit and I move it like so, you're gonna see that it reads it. But you're also gonna see that if I use the jog function and I move it, it also reads it. So that helps make it easier to do the tool setup because I can take each individual tool and just touch it off of one tool setter or one place on the vise or something like that on the table. And as long as I touch each tool, it's gonna to measure the length using the quill. And then once I lock the quill, the encoder on the head is gonna move the head up or down to make up for that tool offset when I change tools. So that gives you a basic idea how the DPM works. It's important to also know that the DPM can be used in two axis mode. And in two axis mode, I'm gonna control all the movement of the table and the machine is gonna tell me when to do the Z work, such as drill a hole or set the depth of my cutter, things like that, okay? To give you a little bit of an idea on the RX control, just in case you're seeing it for the first time, I'm gonna show you a few things. First of all, I'm in DRO mode, right? Um, no matter where I'm at in here, you're always gonna see the mode screen on the right-hand side. These you should be familiar with. They're on every Prototrack we've ever sold. But what's new is the left side. The left side is what we call the information panel. We've added some features on here now, such as a status button. That tells me which options I paid for. It tells me whether I'm working in inches or metric, uh, two axis or three axis, things like that. Um, the tool table is new. With the advanced features, now I have the ability to have a library for my tools. So once I set them up, I can put them in the library. Then when I make a new program, I can assign tools from the library directly to my program, and I don't have to know which number is which. Every program can have tool number one, two, three, four, et cetera, and then I could have 95 tools in my library and just select which tool I want to be tool number one and so on. So that makes it a lot more powerful. There's a feature in here we call EPA, which is short for Enhanced Prototrack Assistance. And what it does is it basically gives me all the information I need to know how to use the control. So no matter where I'm working, when I come into here, I'm going to get uh, things to select to learn about. And when I select any of them, you're gonna get either pictures or videos and illustrations that tell me how to do something. So it's basically the whole book plus a lot of other great machinist info. Whenever I'm done with this, I can either push the back arrow to go to another subject, or I can just hit the EPA flyout window and it'll go away. Um, the next button down there is Math Help. That's the same as every Prototrek we've had before, so I won't spend a lot of time on there. I do wanna talk a little bit about defaults. With the RX control, I can now set the machine up for the way that I like to machine. And I can have different user defaults. You'll see my name is here at the top, but I could set one up for me and then a different one for a different user who maybe wants to have different feeds, uh, like uh, finished cuts or, or using surface footage instead of uh, RPM, things like that. 
or more importantly, I think it's a good idea to set up different user files for different material types. So I could have one for stainless, one for aluminum, one for cold rolled steel, and so on and so forth. So just select which one, and then you would go through here and set your defaults for whatever you want them to be. And then when I'm done, just, just close that window. And when I get into programming, it's gonna autofill a lot of the things that I've put in my defaults for me, okay? The last two buttons I wanna talk about real quickly is there's a keyboard button and a calculator button. So first to the keyboard. The keyboard up here, I can move it wherever I want by grabbing the top bar. I have my full QWERTY keyboard here and I also have the ability to switch it and have all my symbols and my numbers in here for naming programs as well as being able to uh, do engraving, right? In order to close it, just push the button again. And the calculator, of course, allows me to now finally have a calculator that works with the system. So I can also move that one needed if I double tap it. Whoops, missed it. Double tap it, you get a scientific calculator. But the great part here is if I'm in the middle of programming, open the calculator, figure out my calculations, hit ink set or ab set, it'll put it right in the program and I don't have to have one somewhere else or use my phone, okay? So that kind of describes that part. And then I do wanna talk about a couple little features that come with the control as well. So I'm gonna hit the back key here and this is what it would look like when you first turn the machine on. So you'll notice down here, there's a check system button like all of the new Prototrex have, but there's two buttons right here. One that says watch me and one that says what's new. The watch me video uh, button is here with a bunch of short thumbnails of videos to get you started learning how to use the machine so you could be up and running right away. Whenever we add new functions or features to the control, we will update the what's new and you'll get a video there explaining, hey, we added this feature, here's how it works. And so these two buttons will be in every one of your RXs, no matter what model it is. And when you're ready to use it, you just hit the uh, check system button and you're right where we started, okay? So um, I do wanna go over how a few different features work in here because it's got some new stuff in here. So I'm gonna go back to DRO and I wanna explain in here that first of all, you've got your ability to adjust your feeds and speeds. And you'll notice that there's percentages around the outside so that you have quick change so if I'm at 100% and I want to go to 50, I just hit 50 and so on. I also have the ability to change it 1% at a time by using the up or down arrows. And I can simply use a finger and then as I rotate my finger, it's changing the resolution as well, okay? Go back to where I was, just hit 100%. Of course, the feed rates work the same way, all right? Next, I want to talk about some of the things that are in here. Most of the stuff you're going to be aware of, but if you've never seen electronic hand wheels on a machine before, then you're probably not familiar with GoTo. GoTo just allows me to program a number that when I'm using the electronic hand wheels, it'll stop when I get to that number. For instance, right now it's on zero, zero, but I'm just going to set the X at two inches. And you'll see that as I turn the hand wheel, when it gets to two inches, it'll just disconnect it. So it's an extra added feature that you have because you have electronic hand wheels, okay? When I shut it off, it'll automatically override that. There's other new feature in here that's called center. And you'll notice if I select that button, I can find the center of a line or a circle. And the way it works, I just put my edge finder in here, touch it off of one side of my part, hit the set key, move to the other side, touch it off of there, hit the set key. It will calculate the distance between the two and automatically wrap it to that point when you push go and then you can set your zero as well. I've already done that in here, so I'm not gonna change that. I do wanna point out to find the center of a circle. You touch three points in that arc or circle and it will automatically figure out where the center of that is as well, okay? Um, the next thing I wanna talk about a little bit is the programming on here, and then I'm gonna finish up with some of the hardware options that are on this machine, okay? So if I go to program mode, one thing you're gonna notice in here is that I've got a program, I've got a hole that's helically drilled here. The helical drill event is something new to the RX that allows me to drill a hole and finish the floor all in one with an end mill, okay? And we added a feature in here with our drilling event. So let's say I want holes in all these corners. All I have to do is open this options button. The options button allows me to change certain characteristics about the event that I'm looking at and not affect the things that are in my defaults. So for instance, I can change from RPM to surface footage or feed per minute to feed per tooth. But in this case, I've got the multiple holes turned on and it's asking me where are my other holes gonna be, right? So this one is at minus one and a half and two inches. So my next one's gonna be a positive one and a half and two inches. And it says, what about the next one? So this is gonna be positive one and a half and minus two. And the last one's gonna be negative one and a half and minus two. And when I push complete, 
you're gonna see there's all my holes. So it populates what I have in here and puts them in different locations. As I swipe through here, you'll notice that it's highlighting each one of them one at a time. I've got an irregular pocket program in here, which is very important because the RX now has the ability to do any shape pocket, any shape island, and any amount of islands and still figure out how to do your tool paths. But before I get into that part, I wanna explain through the options that you also have the ability to have helical entry now and you have three different tool paths. You can either use the adaptive, parallel, or offset tool path. Right now I have it set in adaptive, okay? So I would do my irregular pocket just like any other irregular features in a prototrack. So describe one piece at a time, describe the islands, and move on. Last but not least, I wanna show you that we've upgraded the way the engraving works. So as you can tell on my piece part here and on the screen, that now you can have options for engraving such as doing mirror imaging doing engraving at an angle, doing it vertically, um, doing it on a radius, okay? So, and you can combine some of the ones together to get exactly what you wanna have. So you got a lot more versatility in here, okay? So um, that being said, you can kind of see here from my piece part that I uh, highlighted the top of it with a magic marker, just so you could see it better and all the different types of engraving in here. And I wanna talk a little bit about tracking and how it works when you run a job. So if I switch here over to the run mode and I push start, as always, it's going to ask me um, which tool, or it's gonna tell me which tool is in there and get me started as soon as it gets done calculating the tool path, right? So there we go. So the nice part is normally, if you've never run a machine with electronic hand wheels and tracking, the great feature is that I push go and I hope that I got everything right, or I push tracking. And when I push tracking, the wonderful part is when I turn the handle, it's gonna automatically move to where I need it to start, and it's gonna tell me the same thing. Start the spindle, put this tool in there, so on and so forth. So when I push track in here and I turn the spindle on, and I'm just gonna slow this down a little bit just so it's not so loud, you'll see that as I start to turn the handle, it's gonna make the piece part. So it's gonna come right down into the part and do the work just as if I expected to do that. But if for some reason something was wrong, I could back it right back out of there and go back and check my work to see what I did wrong. So that gives you the gist of how tracking works and you can use it at any time in the programming sequence, okay? Now, another feature that we put in here that's really nice is let's say I'm machining and all of a sudden I've got a lot of chips in the way or I need to check something. I can simply push stop and hit chip clear and chip clear will allow me to jog the machine. In this case, I can get it out of the way. I can move it over here, whatever I need to do, fix what I have. And when I'm done, just push return and resume and go, and it'll go right back to where it was and start machining again. So that's another really nice feature that we added to the ProTrack RX control, okay? Um, tool setup in here, I talked a little bit about how you do it. It does come with a tool setting device um, that's a little spherical object that you put in one of your tool holders. Just for setting your tools, it makes it a little bit easier to do that. And then last but not least, I wanna talk about some of the hardware options. So on this particular model, if I start on the left side, you'll see that it has the LED work lamp. That's one of the options for the control. Also, the fog buster is on here as a spray mist control that you can get from us. You can get a flood coolant pump, which would use the hose you see right here. And then we would put the pump inside the base of the machine and allow the flood coolant to go through here. The uh, chip pan and uh, splash shields, those come uh, as an option as well. And if you're gonna use flood coolant, they're really helpful to try to keep most of the chips contained. Um, you also see that we have a power draw bar on the top of the head. That's for making changing your tools a lot quicker and easier since you're the tool changer. You'll see that I have limit switches on here. My limit switches are for stopping it at the end of the full travel, which is really important because this machine rapids at 400 inches a minute. So that's another option you might wanna have. And on the smaller models, the DPM-2 and the DPM-3, the electronic hand wheels and tracking is an option. So if you don't have it, you'll have standard hand wheels on the ends of the ball screws. But in a case like this, where I have electronic hand wheels, then I get all those features I just showed you. So uh, the only other option to talk about is the remote, remote stop go, which we've had on every prototrack we've ever made. And it simply puts the go and the stop buttons in your hand. So while you're machining, you have the ability to stop it if anything comes up. It's also real handy and two axis when you're moving from hole to hole and you're drilling with your opposite hand. So that should kind of give you a pretty good idea on the basics of our RX controls. 
Hopefully this gets your questions answered, but if not, reach out to somebody and I'm sure they'll get you more information on all of this. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next video.